What's going on everybody, C4 here. Welcome back to the channel. A little bit of a late upload here on Sunday. I was just chilling with the kid. I don't have to say I lost track of time. It was just, it was more of this video is coming up when it's coming up. And anytime anything Eagles related happens on social media, my Twitter gets absolutely blown up. And today was no different. There was, I think it originated from ESPN, but there was a tweet that Philadelphia is rumored to making a big splash for the beginning of the regular season, which is... I mean, oh sure, more content, more stuff to try to drive some clicks here. Uh, but I want to ask you guys, and I get you to reply to me on Twitter, about what players you think this potentially could be, and then I would react to those on a video. And I'm going to go through all of these, and I'm going to talk about them, whether I think it's a good move, whether I think it will actually happen or not. So the, the groundwork is this. We know Philadelphia's in a rebuild, and outside of the Anthony Harris and Joe Flacco, I truly believe that our signings are going to be... You know, guys that are younger, guys that are going to be able to hopefully be a part of this team two, three years in because, you know, even our owners come out and said we're looking to be competitive in two to three seasons. So getting players that are 30, around 30, I, I don't think are realistic signings for the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, I also think that because of Howie Roseman's nature of being an aggressive general manager and knowing to make a lot of trades and given the amount of draft capital, we're I'm not going to say most likely, but we're probably, probably going to have three first-round picks next season. So you kind of combine those two things, and you have a big red button. Howie Roseman has this big red button, and if there's a trade, he's probably going to make it. So we'll start here. We got Donovan, who said Steven Nelson or Jordan Hicks could potentially be this big splash signing. We'll talk about Jordan Hicks. Uh, social media has been making the comparison that, hey, Philadelphia should send Zach Ertz to Arizona because they need a tight end. And Arizona should send Jordan Hicks back to Philadelphia because we need a linebacker. Now, do we need a linebacker anymore? I, I think that the way Philadelphia addressed that linebacker spot during the draft. Now, they let JOK slip right through. Then they got Landon Dixon in the second round. Now, there was a heart issue with JOK, which, you know, I still would have absolutely drafted him over Landon Dickerson. And that's no negative to Landon Dickerson. He should be the successor to Jason Kelsey. And hopefully he stays healthy and a very good center for a long time. But we saw during that draft that even though I love the selection of Jacoby Stevens late from LSU... Philadelphia is probably happy with their linebackers. They're most likely only going to have two on the field. And between Eric Wilson, Alex Singleton, maybe they're higher than the fan bases on Davion Taylor. Uh, maybe they like what they have at linebacker. So you look at someone like Jordan Hicks, who I think he's been kind of healthy for Arizona. In Philadelphia, he could not stay healthy. He's very much injury prone. And he was good when he was on the field. But that time when he became a free agent, Arizona backed up the Brinks truck. And it was kind of like, it, it was a both sides of that divorce. We're kind of in a grant. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't super upset that Philadelphia didn't match what Arizona paid for Jordan Hicks because while he was a good player, while he was probably our best linebacker at that time, he just couldn't stay healthy. So now he's a little bit older, and you're looking at Philadelphia, and I, I just, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't think we need Jordan Hicks at this point, and I don't think he, he constitutes big splash. But we look at Steven Nelson. Here's a tweet from PFF. And it said that Steven Nelson, it was when he got released from the Pittsburgh Steelers because he wanted to get paid more money, Steven Nelson has a 78.1 PFF grade, which is the 11th highest since 2019. So that's pretty good because easily the single biggest position to need for Philadelphia outside of maybe quarterback, depending on how you feel about Jalen Hurts, is the corner spot. Because outside of Darius Slay, I honestly can't tell you who corner two is going to be. Is it Zach McPherson? Is it going to be... Is Michael Jaquette on some Mexican supplements and he's not going to get absolutely dusted by the Dallas Cowboys? I don't know, but someone like Steven Nelson, I think between Steven Nelson and Gary on Conley, those are probably the two remaining corner free agents that I think kind of makes sense for Philadelphia. But even Nelson, he's 20, what is he, 28? 28, 29? It's not like you're getting some guy that's going to have, you know, four more years left of his prime. You get someone like Steven Nelson, that's not necessarily a win now type move, but uh, I, I'll just say I don't necessarily think Steven Nelson constitutes starting this rumor mill up of a big splash but I would still be very happy if I woke up tomorrow and it said Philadelphia signed Steven Nelson to like a two-year 10 million dollar deal or something like that um so yeah not you know I guess not bad show it's kind of realistic we have Tim here said Julio Jones in June so I assume that's probably something with his contract which makes the Atlanta Falcons uh you know gives them a little bit more wiggle room to move on from Julio Jones and again while Julio Jones sure I would love to have Julio I'd probably get that jersey just for even if it's only one or two years, but Philadelphia's going in a rebuild. I don't think, especially with the first round investment of Devontae Smith in the first round, I don't think they're going to be... I, I don't think the sense from the Philadelphia Eagles front office is that they're low on Jalen Rager. They think it was just an injury thing and he's going to bounce back. Philly probably thinks they have their wide receiver one and wide receiver two, and I don't think someone like Julio Jones, especially given up big assets 
to the Atlanta Falcons. I don't know if it would cost a first rounder to get Julio Jones at this spot. Probably still would, right? And I don't think that that would be a smart spending of resources for the Philadelphia Eagles, and I just don't think it makes sense. And I don't know necessarily why Julio Jones would come to Philly. I feel like Atlanta would do right by Julio and maybe trade into a contender. So uh, it'd be nice, but maybe not. Uh, Bengal, Bengal Designs, said Tristan Hill. Now, I will say from a standpoint that you might say, whoa, okay, it's troll. But I, 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 you know, I get it. I get what he's saying here because you look something like Tristan Hill, right? You know, if, if you look at Madden, Tristan Hill was the second round pick for the Dallas Cowboys. And in Madden, he was one of the highest rated D-linemen that year. And I don't and I don't know why Dallas Cowboy rookies tend to have pretty strong rookie ratings. And someone like Tristan Hill had a very high rookie rating, even though most people in the draft community had him as a day three selection. Thought he was one of the bigger reaches in that second round. Still came in. I think he was like a 72. Don't know if he had a dev trade or not. But I really do think, you know, you first of all, you think Howie Roseman likes to build within the trenches, right? Second of all, clearly has a strong Madden ring, so he's probably better than expected. Third of all, has this really, really, you know, you think of the peanut punch, right, with Peanut Tillman. It's kind of what made him stand out. No one else really did that. You look at Tristan Hill, he has this tackling technique. It's like a gator roll. Not many people in the league are doing that. So he's an outstanding human being, and I think from that standpoint, I, I, I don't think Jerry Jones really wants someone like Tristan Hill to leave that building. It really does fit into that Dallas Cowboy culture, but, you know... Howie Roseman likes to build within the trenches. So Tristan Hill, very strong maybe pile. Um, we have uh, Saints fan who said Jimmy Garoppolo. I absolutely don't think this should happen, but the more I hear it, the more I'm like, I could see it happening though. I, I think that if you're the San Francisco 49ers, now that you seemingly lost your trade partner in Jimmy Garoppolo with the Patriots because they selected Mac Jones, it's like, all right, do we keep Jimmy Garoppolo here to be this, the bridge quarterback between Trey Lance and... I think that's probably what's best for them. But if they do trade for him, I could just see something, just a complete Howie Roseman blunder of like, you know, hey, we're a quarterback factory and uh, Jimmy Garoppolo has a lot of good football left and, you know, I went to the Super Bowl. He went to the Super Bowl a couple years. That's my best Howie Roseman impersonation. But I, this is probably worst case scenario that I could see realistically happening would be Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, I would rather give Jalen Hurts the opportunity outright. Than, than, I would much rather Jimmy Garoppolo... To not be a member of the Eagles and give Jalen Hurts the opportunity than just to have, you know, both of them and they battle it out or something like that. You know, if you just don't get Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo, like Philadelphia, I mean, the only way Jimmy Garoppolo to the Eagles makes sense is that if Philadelphia is truly committing to running the ball like 400 times and they just want to use the biggest strength of Jimmy Garoppolo's game, which outside of banging very old porn stars is hand the football off. Jimmy Garoppolo probably has the best handoff out of any quarterback in the NFL. So if Philadelphia is going to be looking to run the ball more, you know, you have that the Heem Hines, Jonathan Taylor's, you know, Indianapolis Colts influences coming to the offense. You know, hey, maybe you know, maybe Jalen Hurts doesn't hand the ball off as well, and you really want that S tier ball hand handle hand offer in Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, Jacob said Aaron Rodgers. Now Aaron Rodgers had that short list of teams he'd like to go to. It was the 49ers, which isn't obviously going to happen anymore. It was the Vegas Raiders, which could happen. Or it's the Denver Broncos, which I hope does happen because I put 25 bucks on the Denver Broncos when the Super Bowl, it pays out like 2500 So, hey, I would really financially love that trade to come to fruition. But when you have someone like Aaron Rodgers that wants to get traded, it's, it's, it's not all in Aaron Rodgers' power, right? You're going to have to give up fair compensation. And when you look at, again, draft capital, which is definitely what Green Bay would be looking for in return as they would usher in the Jordan Love era, you know, Philly has the draft capital. We have the aggressive GM and the draft capital to make a trade like that happen. Would I be happy with Aaron Rodgers? Absolutely. Would I rather Aaron Rodgers than Jalen Hurts? Absolutely. Would I give up two first-round picks for Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, he's the reigning MVP. Do I think it's going to happen? I do not. Because, again, Philly wants to get younger. And going with Aaron Rodgers is like a win-now move. It's like something that would benefit someone like the Denver Broncos, which has very good skill position players. Solid offensive line, and you have a defense that's good enough to definitely go in on a playoff run. You know, you still got Von Miller's not getting any younger, Fuller, um, Kareem Jackson. Like, there's some veterans back there, man. Those there's some guys that are like that Denver Bronco defense for the most part is like win now. So I I think Aaron Rodgers from a what team can pay Green Bay enough to get Aaron Rodgers services? Philly makes sense. Do I think it's gonna fit how they're trying to build this team? Probably not. Uh, we have Matt who said Deshaun Watson. I guarantee most people that click this video is probably like, hey, Deshaun, 
Oh, man. Deshaun Watson. I mean, hey, I got to talk about it. That's clearly what people think of when you think of big splash moves for Philadelphia, maybe, even though it's not the last one I'm going to talk about. I I have, and this, maybe, this is, maybe this is enough to say that C4 is a garbage human being. I, I think I'm a good person, but I don't know how to feel about Deshaun Watson. And I feel like there's going to be people that automatically, if you don't think Deshaun Watson is guilty, you're a bad person. I just want to see a play out. That's all I'm going to say. If Deshaun Watson is guilty, don't want anything to do with him. Absolutely don't want anything to do with him. But if he's found innocent, I mean, if he's found innocent... I, I would not pick a new team. I, I maybe would be very suspect to Deshaun Watson. I, I don't know if I would buy Deshaun Watson jersey if he became a member of the Philadelphia Eagles right away anyways. But if he's innocent, that would be a whole other video. Because then in time, if he is innocent, it's not going to look bad if he does end up being guilty in this video. So I, I think I, 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 I will say that I'm not immediately dismissing Deshaun Watson as a member of the Philadelphia Eagles. I want to see how the whole thing plays out. And then be able to formulate my opinion after that. Um, last person, Sam, said JC Jackson or Stephon Gilmore. That was the last suggestion because I think that makes the most sense. Not so much Stephon Gilmore because he's 31. But both these guys are set to be free agents. And I feel like JC Jackson makes the most sense for the Philadelphia Eagles. Obviously, he was a ball hawk last year. Seven picks, eight picks, somewhere in that range. And he just... That makes sense for Philadelphia. Out of all these suggestions, if Philly's making a splash move and we don't know what's going on with the legal stuff with Deshaun Watson, J.C. Jackson would make the most sense. Because A, Bill Belichick has been shown to not really care when good players become free agents. It's like, you know, remember like Trent Brown, for example. It's just like, oh, you're in a contract year? All right, we're going to get some value from you because there's no way we're resigning him. We know that most likely you would come back here in like a year or two because you were product of my scheme, product of my system, and you're not going to flourish elsewhere. Now, I would be incredibly worried if Philadelphia did make a trade for a, well, maybe not so much Gilmore because he's proven, but someone like J.C. Jackson who came out of nowhere. But I like J.C. Jackson. Once upon a time, was a Florida Gator. And then he went to, I can't remember where he went to, Rutgers. Was it Rutgers? Maryland, Rutgers, something like that. And he was one of those guys I wanted Philly to get as UDFA. And he ended up going to the New England Patriots and had a breakout year last season. And I feel like from an age standpoint, he's 26, 27. That makes sense. Get him on. I don't know how we would be able to make the finances work. I assume if a trade like that did come to fruition, it would be we'd have a contract extension in place right away as he came out of the team. I like J.C. Jackson. I think stylistically probably fits our secondary. Um, I, I think that makes the most sense. I think I, I think like that's... That's the one guy. Gilmore, not so much, even though there's rumors and stuff that they've been trying to trade him. Stuff. That, a little too short-term for Philadelphia. I, I don't think, and even the, <laughs> even if they made that move, I don't think the first thing we might be like, ah, oh, why we do that? Because, you know, hey, he's not going to be here by the time we're good again. But we're so desperate at corner that you'd make that move. But what would it cost to get someone like Stephon Gilmore? I feel like he's proven. He's a win-now move. Maybe he would cost more than someone like J.C. Jackson, who's a one-year wonder. But then there's also the Patriots potentially selling high on J.C. Jackson and be like, look at the interception numbers and trying to like, I, I, I don't know. But I would say right now, the most realistic option I think would be J.C. Jackson and I would be very happy with that because we absolutely need cornerback help. But what do you guys think in the comments section below? What player do you think Philadelphia could be trading for to make this big splash? J.C. Jackson for me. That's the, that's the play. What do you guys think in the comment section below? That'll do it for me today. Hopefully tomorrow... I get the updated Madden 22 rosters from Madden 21, and we can start that new franchise. Uh, but if not, sure, it'll be something for you guys to watch tomorrow. So thank you for watching. As always, first time stopping by, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Until next time, it's C4 saying peace out.